Good day and welcome to Working For You. I am Les Roy Williams. I thank you very much for joining us today for our program. Wherever you are, your company is always appreciated. Today we are going to be discussing the National Housing Corporation's work, the work that it is doing. But not only that, the cooperation is celebrating its 24th anniversary. And over 24 years, the NHC would have grown in leaps and bounds. So today I have my esteemed panel. I have with me the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, who is Minister of Human Settlement and other ministries, of course, but he is responsible for the National Housing Cooperation. Minister Hamilton, welcome. Thank you, Les Roy. I appreciate the opportunity to join you today and share some information that I hope will be of value to the public. I hope that it will. I also have Mr. Valentine Lindsay, who is chairman of the NHC board. Mr. Lindsay, welcome. Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Williams, good afternoon. And good afternoon to the listening audience. I also have with me, thank you, Mr. Lindsay. I also have Ms. Jonelle Rollins, who is Client Relations, Public Relations at NHC. Ms. Rollins, welcome. Thank you, and good afternoon. Right, so. Here we are, and on your anniversary, your 24th anniversary. And of course, anniversaries are something to celebrate. Mr. Hamilton, what are you celebrating? <laughs> Apart from the 24 years. <laughs> on the 1st of September, each year, we celebrate the anniversary, the birth of the National Housing Corporation. And so while we have described this as the 24th anniversary, truly and specifically speaking, we have embarked upon a journey which I will describe as the 25th Jubilee year of the NHC. So for the whole of this year, we can expect to hear much more about the work of the National Housing Corporation the impact it has on the general public, especially on those who are indigent and poor. And during the year, we will have events that will engage the public so that we can keep alive in the minds of all those, especially those who are still waiting to be served by NHC, that we at NHC do things and improve standards, we said, we say that the motto is raising standards. So throughout this year, we want to show that we are raising the standards and the quality of lives of the individuals and families in the Federation. Well, particularly in St. Kitts, because as you know, Nebis has its own operations in St. Kitts. Right. So you are raising standards and doing that by providing homes for persons. And you mentioned in particular, the poor and the indigent. Yes. We, we, we have embarked on several programs. In fact, in the last five years, uh, under the Team Unity Administration, we've embarked on some projects, some housing development projects that have, if you look at them carefully, and if you visit them, you will see that the quality has improved, the size of the homes, individual homes, have improved. The quality of the interior, the, front, the, 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 
kitchen furniture, furnishings, the cupboards. You will notice also that we have improved quality tiling. We also have it properly painted uh, in a variety of colors that appears to be very attractive. And I will say when someone moves into a home today built by NHC, you move into a finished product, a finished home, that all you have to do is really live, enjoy, and I would also say to you, protect. That is what we do. We have built several uh, different models. In fact, we introduced a model that houses individuals, a single person, in apartments which you will describe as studio apartments. We introduced that in St. Peter's. We introduced another model where the townhouses have had a, 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 an apartment on both ends of the townhouses which now has three bedrooms rather than two. And the reality is that we recognize that some families do have someone who is old or older in the family and we think it is a challenge for them to be walking up and down the stairs every day, twice, three times a day. We recognize that those townhouses, usually the bedrooms are upstairs. In these which we have done, we have introduced a bedroom on the ground floor and as a result, your grandmother or great-grandfather who is there can easily just walk from the living room into his bedroom rather than having to climb the stairs. It is one of the innovations of which we are proud. Uh, we have to do some work to make sure that the cost is uh, affordable by all. And so we look forward to opening those new townhouses sometime late this year. I am really hoping that by December of this year, we will then be able to have an event there which uh, showcases 18 apartments, six of which are three bedroom apartments. That is in the village of Stapleton. So the people in St. Peter's, which is part of my constituency, are the beneficiaries of the first set of three bedroom uh, houses. Some people describe it as condos. I wouldn't want to go that far. but. Um, the quality is such that I really cannot disagree with them when they describe it that way. But um, it is the townhouse concept. We look forward, uh, uh, again, uh, I say, uh, with Les Roy, that we look forward to be innovative, creative as we go forward in the next term because we recognize that there's a demand for single bedroom uh, apartments. They are young people who are demanding. Um, I would like to tell the young people to stay another year or two in their family home so that they can continue to create that love and harmony. But after all, if a young person wants to be independent, so too they should have an opportunity to be independent. And now we will try and see how we can facilitate that through NHC. Now, John L. you are the manager of client and public relations. This is your anniversary, of course, and anniversaries, celebrations, and so on, are about the people. How have you incorporated the people, your clients, the public, into the celebrations for your 24th anniversary? Okay, let's why. We, our anniversary, as was discussed, started on September 1st. However, we started off the activities on Sunday, 30th of August. And you know, you cannot have any activities without invoking God's blessings. And so the staff at NHC, management and staff, decided to go to church. So we visited the, we worshipped actually at pa Pastor Connor and Baptist Church on Sunday. Then over the past couple of days, that is Monday and Tuesday, we launched a number of our videos highlighting NHC's progress and not only the progress, but what is presently taking place at NHC. Now we are here today, 
which is also a part of the activities. And tomorrow we are about to launch for the first time, which is very timely based on what's happening with the COVID-19 pandemic, our online platform, which is called the ePay. The online plat platform allows customers, homeowners, to pay their, bill, their land and mortgage online. No longer do they have to come into NHC. You can say from in the comfort of your home, either the comfort of your home, your office, or wherever you are on the beach, and pay your mortgage. The, it is a very simple platform. You log in with your, your, we will provide your username and password, which you will change when you log in. Click on pay, if that's what you want to do, make payment, and then you make your payment. We will email you your, your, your balances, we will email you your history, payment history, which you can also see right there but we will also email that to you. So it's a simple process, it's very timely as I said, and it will be working for everyone. Then on Friday, which is the 4th, we have a house allocation ceremony of three prefab houses. Totally different from what we have built in the past and what we are currently building. These houses are equipped, well they're semi-furnished, I don't want to get into all the details right now, because we have a, we'll be having a launch, a ceremony, and we would like people to come out and see what it is like. We also want to do a walkthrough with ZIZ, so we can't give out all the details right now, but five o'clock on Friday, we will have our house allocation ceremony, and that will be in Hermitage, Kayon. On Saturday, there's an online discussion, which ends the week of activities, an online discussion on our Facebook page, NHC St. Kitts, and there you can dialogue with Candice Dickerson, the secretary of the board, or my, and myself from 11 a.m. We are hoping that it will last an hour, but depends on the interaction. We may, it may go a little longer. Okay, thank, thank you, John L. Uh, over these 24 years, the NHC has grown. There has been growth there has been development. Mr. Lindsay, you're the chairman of the NHC board. What are some of the ways in which the NHC has grown and developed over the years? Thank you, Mr. Williams. I think under my watch or under the new administration back in 2015, we would have did an assessment of NHC and recognized in order for us to engage the, the, the public a little more in order for us to, to meet the, the, the demand. We, en we issued in two new departments. That was the Client Relations Department, and this department was set up in order for us to, to reach out to the public and interact with the public a little more. And so that, that is one of the, the new ideas that came through. We also did the Purchasing Department, that department is head by uh, Mr. Allen, and that too was to solve some of the issues we, we had in the past in terms of procurement and, and, and quick response in, in, in getting and materials on site. So we developed a complete new department to, to, to have that. The other thing that we would have done in, 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 in changing to, we would have looked at our presence and we develop an online presence. And so persons now can go online, nhc.kn, and they can do different applications, whether it is a land application, whether it's house application, whether it's applications for help, or whether they just want to look at some of our designs. Because we have three, three main designs that we push. I think we have the strawberry, we have the guava berry, and both have ha hard tops or concrete roof. And so persons now can go online and look at the different plans and, and maps of these of the sites. And so those are some of the innovative things that, that, that came through in order for us to, to reach out and be a little more closer to to our our pers our clients. We also introduce where persons can can pay using their, their card. That was something that never happened in the past, and so we were able to, to do that as well. 
and so persons can come in and, and swipe the card and, and pay. Now we are taking it a step further, uh, as was just mentioned by, by our, our manager, um, Journal, that we'll be having persons be able to access online payments. And so these are some of the, 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 the things. The other thing that we, we did, um, the minister would have touch, touched on it a little, a little while earlier, we opened the bedrooms. The, the house is now, the square footage now, I think that it moved from up just about eight, 800 to 893. We have bigger bedrooms, bigger bathrooms. We now move from the asphalt roof to the galvalume roof. And so, I, and I believe even in the first stages, the first couple of months we did the cupboards, just the lower end cupboards. And I think when the, we had the first allocation, the minister would have recognized that we need to do both upper and lower cupboards. So those are some of the things that, that, that changed. And over time, we did some tweaking and improvements of, of, of the, the, what we have to offer within, within the houses. I also, we, we tried something when we, we did also uh, the house allocations in Cunningham. One of the things that we just do not want to allocate houses to persons. We just do not want to just give persons the keys and they move in their house. What we try to do is create communities. And we wanted the persons within it for each development that they, they probably can form sort almost like an association where they can interact and, and, and look at ways how they can improve the communities. And once we have any area with, with more than five, six houses, there is normally a green space. And we are also you know, encouraging our clients to beautify the, 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 the space. And we also want to encourage clients to have almost the fencing and, 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 and so on to be of a particular design so it complements the, the community. I think we also had a program where we were giving persons um, plants to also to help beautify the, 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 the surroundings and to, to ensure that we have a, almost like a uniformity. And so these are some of the things that we, we try to do in order to, to embrace the new trust that we are going and within within the, the, the coming the coming months we also will be looking at different designs we recognize i think the minister alluded to it somewhat we recognize that there are some single persons who are wanting housing and so we are now going to concentrate at least for this first year on one bedroom units where persons who do not have any family, do not have any children, but they just have land and they're ready to just move out of their family home and go on their, go on their, their own. So we will be seeing some different models in terms of one bedrooms, and these are the response that we are responding to, to our clients. We also have in, 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 in the near future to some homes, some townhouses that we're supposed to do in Connery. And these may be more suited in terms of sustainable development. And so the ideas that we are, we are toying around with that the board, the board have been discussing is to have sustainable living. And on these, these townhouses would have um, a hard, sorry, a concrete roof with a garden on the top. So persons could actually utilize every space that they have. So if you do not have the yard space, you have the, the, the garden on the roof. So this is a, these are some of the innovative um, things we are, we are looking at. And also, as the minister mentioned, we, in, in Paris, St. Peter's, we would have built some studio apartments. And so going forward, the idea is to have a number of studio apartments in different areas of the country. And I think the next place we will have those studio apartments is earmarked to be in Toyon Heights. That's somewhere down there close to the challenges area. And so we, 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 at that area as well, we will be doing a moderation of the design that we had in St. Peter's. So we'll actually have a one bedroom apartment as opposed to a studio apartment. Right, so <clears throat> of course we know that before NHC, when I was growing up, I would hear about CHA. You know, the Central Housing Authority authority 
authority and um, NHC was started or the, na the, the name changed took place in 1996 by an act of parliament, right? And so on. Now, we can't have homes basically without land. Now, Minister Hamilton, you're also the Minister of Lands. And could you outline for us in terms of the number of lands that have been distributed um, under your watch as Minister of Lands? Well, I, I, I'm afraid uh, uh, that I have to correct you. Uh, the Ministry of Sustainable Development is the ministry that has responsibility for all crown lands and other lands. And the Ministry of Sustainable Development is really uh, one under the Prime Minister. So um, the information to do with sustainability, Ministry of Sustainability, and its work really reside with that ministry. So unfortunately, I can't today tell you how many lots of land have been distributed by the Ministry of Sustainable Development. But what I can tell you is that when we came to office in 2015, there were over 6,000 lots of land that were distributed in areas where there was no infrastructure, no water, no electricity, no roads. And so many persons, though they had land, and in fact, it was under a program that I will say was more of a distraction, really, because you were told that you could pay $100 down and basically you will get your title. That was far from the truth. So many persons, for many years now, have paid that $100 and have not done anything else. In areas where there is no continuity of payment of land, it is difficult to see government providing resources to put in infrastructure for nothing to be happening and so we want to encourage those persons who have been who have paid the hundred dollars to do something about completing the payments on those lands so that government can facilitate by putting infrastructure in we can then have a, an acceleration of the construction of homes not only by NHC but financed by the financial institutions and other mechanisms for financing home construction. I will say though that the Team Unity Administration has distributed several hundreds more. But in those areas where we have distributed, the plan, the five year plan ahead of us is targeting all of the areas to make sure that infrastructure is in place for persons to, to, to build on, on, on those lots of land. Persons, and let me make this point, let's Roy, because persons do get land and they become delinquent in paying for the lands. Usual letter will say pay X percent down. I think the number, it figures 25 percent and it, I, they may, they, there may be some modification over time. And then you have a period of two years to complete the payment. But many persons let two, three, four, five, six, eight years pass. And each, year, each day that goes by, it attracts interest. So imagine you have had a piece of land worth $25,000 on day one. And you're down to year eight and the, the cost of the land is now 50000 because you have not paid. It makes better sense, those of you who are listening and viewing, it makes better sense to pay for the land and reduce your debt burden. I was in church on Sunday and the pastor preached and he was echoing the sentiments strongly, maybe more than sentiment, that to be in debt is to be enslaved. Your enslavement is enslavement. So if you have land, not because you did not go to a bank and borrow or to some other financial institution and borrow. And it is a price has been given to you and a letter which says you should pay within a certain time or else it attracts interest. What happens is 
you will end up paying twice, three times as much, maybe, depending on how long you take to, pay, to make the payment. And so I encourage all those who have received land to do so. I should also say, there is something in that letter which speaks about revocation of the land, because your land could be revoked if you take no action and other, so that other persons can benefit if you do not want to benefit from it. The same is true about our housing, Les Roy. When we distribute homes at NHC, you know what the price, the monthly payment is. And we encourage everyone to make sure that they at least pay one month in advance and keep on paying. And the reason for that is, well, it, anything you're paying in a way is the tracks interest. Additional interest which you shouldn't be paying. And so you should be paying at least a month in advance and pay regularly. And I say regularly because too many persons think that they can easily miss a month payment of the house. And because it's a government institution, no action might be taken against them. But we don't want to look for action against anyone. What we want is the payment so that we can use those resources to build another home for someone else. Because the more people pay, the better it is for those who are applying. When we looked at the applications about two or three years ago, we saw that in the last 10 year period before that, over 10 year period, we had over 5,000 applications. Now that's a lot of applications coming to one institution. And so you, that tells you how many persons are out there waiting. And so we need your cooperation at NAC. Make your payment on time and where possible, in fact, you should make it a must, pay one month in advance. I think that, Mr. Hamilton, you touched on something, you know, the, the political climate or the political underpinnings that have created a culture of delinquency in terms of payment. Because you would hear people feel that, you know, oh, I voted for Mr. Hamilton, I got a house under his, you know, as his, his constituent and so on. So why should I have to pay? My vote is enough. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I hope that people do not adopt that approach. And if they do, then I will not be able to disagree with you. Mm -hmm. But I hope they do not uh, adopt that approach at all. Because the truth is, and, and you're right, I, I have come across individuals who have held that view. They feel as if, you know, they will not be... Um, I wouldn't go as far as prosecuted, but maybe even um, pursued for, the, for, for early payment. Um, they think that you will not be able to take that action uh, because uh, they, they, do, they vote. But collecting a, uh, owning a home has nothing to do with the vote. Owning a home is one of the, the, the largest investment you'll make in your life. Something which you can use for so many different purposes, for future for even for accessing uh, funds for, for future education of your children. And to have your home tied up in mortgage beyond the time that is allotted is really doing more harm to the family and re 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 reducing the, the opportunity for the younger ones who come along and want to study and may need financing to be able to access financing. Owning a home, look, in St. Kitts and Nevis we are so privileged Many nations in the world, people don't even have roof over their heads. And we are so privileged that we have, a, you know, we have government putting out resources to build, to turn, uh, to turn the soil into some, a, a, a structure that can house two, three, four families. And we are taking it for granted. We are taking it for granted. And perhaps some people need to realize how difficult it is. There are some parts of the world that do not even have, you know, facilities for in which people can properly sleep. And so I want to encourage us, let us be thankful for what we have, let us give God thanks for what we have, and let us treat it with all the care, with all of the care that we should treat it with, so that, you know, it can last for a long, long time. It can benefit the generations after you. And so I want to encourage you, again I go back to making your payments, one should consider making your payments on time and in fact making at least your payments one month ahead of time.
Right. So shelter is a, is a basic human right, which you outlined there, Mr. Hamilton. But Mr. Lindsay, in terms of the delinquency, what is done? It's important because if people continue to be delinquent and there is no sort of a penalty, it persists. And so therefore sometimes you hear people say, well, you know, look, they're giving all these delinquent people these homes. They're not paying for them, but I can pay for a house and I am not getting one. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Williams, what I would say, the team Unity Administration would have looked at the possibility of persons, of assisting persons in ensuring that they can make their monthly obligations. So quite early, I think it was just about 2016, the government had a policy, or made, came up with a policy. If your salary is under 3,000, the interest rate will be 2%. If your salary is over 3,000 but under 4,000, your mortgage interest rate would be 3%. And if your salary is over $5,000, your interest charge to you would be 5%. And so the, the, the government looked at that as an effort to reduce payments, monthly payments, in order to aid persons to ensure that they can meet those commitments. The board of directors would have looked at a number of, of, of avenues or ideas in which we can go after those persons who are delinquent. Within the corporation, they would, the public relations department and the, 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 the mortgage department, they would call persons, they would remind them of their obligations and their commitment. I think we would write letters and send out letters to these persons. And the board has been struggling with whether we now need to go to the next stage by having the lawyers, our lawyers, write to persons. But the idea is to ensure that persons have that ability to, to, to pay. And so at this juncture, this 24th anniversary, we are making another push the office of the client relations and the mortgage department will be inviting persons in because we want to reset we want to reset the buttons and the, the, the board has been looking at resetting the buttons so persons will be called in have a conversation to see what are the challenges because sometimes when persons receive a house when a family receive a house you may just have a single parent because we know most of all our families are single parents, female, mother. And they may receive a house when they had their, their children, you might have, they might have had one child just about 15 years, another one 17. Five years would have passed. And so the child that was 17 is now 22. And so what we want to do at the corporation is to call persons back in if they are in the delinquent category and look at how their child or children now can assist in the monthly payments. And this is one of the things that we want to do because we recognize that the parent salary might not have changed, but because they now have two persons in the house who are working, it can help in terms of ensuring that the monthly commitments are maintained. And so that is one of the, the things we, we want to do. And we are also discussing at the board a collections department. And so in short order, very short order, I think in a matter of three weeks, three weeks to, to, to four weeks, we would have that new department. And so we also would have a vehicle, one of our vehicle would be marked collection department. And for persons who have ignored the phone calls, ignored the letters, we will be showing up at their homes to ensure that we can get the funds or the monies in order to ensure. Because every allocation, persons take the keys and they shake it and they laugh and they celebrate. 
And what we want to do at NHC is ensure that once you make your payments, we can have someone else having that joy of receiving a key. And so that is why we are encouraging persons to make sure that they make their payments on time. So someone else, another family, can benefit. Sometimes it's not always about the person not being able to pay, but it is a matter of attitudes. How do you change attitudes and how do you change how people view their priorities? It's, it's another um, thing. Now, now John L., you would, you're dealing with the public, it's public relations. What are some of the attitudes that you would have encountered and how do you try to get people to understand, well, you need to change this attitude and to be more responsible. I know that we are in a pandemic right now, the COVID-19 pandemic. Some people are unemployed, uh, are not able to, to make their monthly payments and so on. Also, how is that being dealt with? Yes, there are persons out there with real serious issues, underlying issues why it's difficult to make payment. And so our department is charged with contacting these persons, ensuring that they come in and explain their situation to us to see how we can restructure or refinance the mortgage if necessary. However, the difficult part to that is not reaching the persons. Persons are actually ignoring the calls ignoring the letters that are sent and just plain out telling us that they're not going to make a payment. Some people say that they got the, the house for free. Some persons say oh, they don't feel like they should pay because somebody else is not paying. And even though, you know, it, it upsets you to hear that because like Valentine Lindsay said, it will prevent someone else from getting a home who really needs it. If you continue to not pay the, your mortgage on time, we will be in a deeper situation, a deeper, a bigger problem than we are presently. And so we, we try to be as calm as possible. We try to be mentors. We try to be budget analysts. We try everything to get through to persons. Now, not everyone have, are going to, not everyone is going to complain. Some persons will come in and they will start to make a payment and then the neighbor will tell them they're not paying so they fall off again. They're not making any payment. So we, we are all kind of things to, to them in our department. And that all, that's all we can do right now until we implement our strategic but very serious uh, steps, take step, very serious steps to curb the delinquency. Right now it's um, spiraling upwards significantly and rapidly and we have, to, we have to bring that down. And it starts with Mr. Valentine Lindsay <laughs> approving <laughs> to take these drastic measures. So that is what what we are trying to do. Now, NHC is not in it for the profit, right? You're not in it for the profit. You want to provide affordable and um, quality homes to people who otherwise would not be able to afford a home. But at the very same time, you want them to have some sort of a responsibility in terms of knowing that I have a home, my socioeconomic condition, has improved, but at the same time, I have a responsibility to pay. Yes, we have to educate them on the budgeting, of course. We have to educate them on the benefits and advantages, as well as the disadvantages of not paying your mortgage on time. You may have a child who wants to go to college. You can use that. It's an asset. You can use it to get as collateral to get a loan. If you're in delinquency, we will submit a letter to, to the, the financial institution to let them know you are in delinquency. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing if you're trying to apply for a visa to go to the US or Canada. They would, it, it's nice to see that you have property to come, you will be coming back home.
to something. But if we refuse to give you a letter to say, yes, this person owns a house with NHC, how will you get the, the visa? So you have to look at it from different angles and prioritize. It's a matter of prioritizing. What is priority to me? I know keeping a roof over my head is priority. I know Mr. Lindsay said, you know, when you get the home, of course, you shake the keys and there's so much joy. But of course, what happens when you're not paying? You should feel sad. <laughs> you know, and the keys are not taken back. If the keys, if, if there was a ceremony to say, well, you know, all who ain't paying, bring back the keys. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be such a joyous, a joyous ceremony at all. <laughs> Mr. Hamilton, you yeah. wanted to speak. Well, um, I, I want to make a different point, however, not on, on that point, and so I appreciate the opportunity to do so. Um, traditionally, and it still is principally what we do, is to build a home no more than two bedrooms. Our standard, our practice has been two bedrooms. We have, however, in the last five years, uh, taken the initiative to build some three bedrooms because we recognize the size of some families um, much bigger. Uh, we do have a lot of demand for three-bedroom houses, whether the family is one or, 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 not, or, or two. And so we w I want to make it clear to those who are listening and viewing that our standard practice is to build no more than two bedrooms. It is only in the extreme circumstance that we will tend to accommodate persons with a three-bedroom. And you may find that uh, some persons might want to make you an enemy because you cannot give them a three-bedroom home. So those of you who feel that way, just, just appreciate that the policy has been for us to build two bedrooms. In the last five years, however, we have done some creative things. For example, we have some homes which are two bedrooms already, and the family becomes six and seven. We have added two bedrooms, another bedroom and bathroom for that particular homeowner. Because really, and, and, uh, you know, if, if as, as the chairman said earlier, some, ad, some of the children have now become adults. They are now working. They are not willing already to leave home as yet. And their contribution to a mortgage payment with an additional room can be sustained. And so we accommodate uh, that. And, and I, I, as I did say earlier, that in, 20, in the next five years, We'll be focusing on single bedroom apartments because of the demand. But we also have the ability to add that additional room in the event uh, there's a need. What we have also done quite a bit more than before is to give a concrete roof to ordinary um, householder with the opportunity for them to turn upstairs, turn, you know, their house into an upstairs um, uh, tenement. So that's, that has been done more so in the last five years than before. And that is why sometimes when you go around the country and you see a house, you don't even know it's an NHC house anymore. It looks different and they're very attractive. All in all, I will say that the last five years, and in fact the last 24, now we're in the 25th year, the National Housing Corporation has moved from an idea which started with the establishment of the corporation under the, under the 1996 Act to a, an institution that has invested millions, over $100 million into, well, more than $100 million into the, the housing um, adding great value to the overall economic activity of the country, providing jobs for hundreds of persons who are carpenters and masons and plumbers 
and electricians. We have impacted the working community significantly by what we do. And it is not just about those who do the work, but their families. Because of someone working on a house on a, for NHC who earns is, or is, is in a position to feed his family, is in a position to, fight, to provide for his family something that they need from maybe TDC or Hosford's or elsewhere. So we are providing food, clothing and shelter by what we do at NHC. Yes, people see it as just a shelter. But if you think about it in the bigger context, food is provided, clothing is provided, love and harmony in the home is provided. Because the person may build a home and, and, and get a home and shake his keys and enjoy that. But there's someone who built it. Someone who did the plumbing work on it. And it all adds to the economic development of the country. It adds to a gross domestic product. Big time. So we are happy at NHC that we contribute significantly to the overall, Certainly. overall national pie right. every year. So to lives and livelihoods yes. you're contributing and you're contributing to the business sector. That's right. And all of that. Providing employment That's and right. providing business opportunities That's right. for businesses. But at the same time, the, the standard and the quality, the people that you employ to do the work on these homes, who really supervises them to ensure that the standard and quality that NHC upholds is upheld and so that there are not complaints when you know people move into a house they hear that all oh, the tiles are rising up and this is not done properly and that is not done properly and so on because it's a bad it, it becomes a bad reflection on the corporation itself i'll, I'll let you check to that yes yes uh, mr williams we have i think it's five departments and one of those departments is called a technical department and that technical department is led by a gentleman by the name of Offlin Rogers. And he's the head or the manager of the technical department. And within the technical department, you have what you call another four inspectors. And these inspectors are to go out into the fields and interact and guide, in some cases, the contractors. So at the time of laying out, it, the inspector would be there to assist in laying out the land or laying out the, the, the house. The backer will come in and, 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 and dig the foundation. And for every stage, the inspector will go. So at least, at least three times a week, the inspector should go on site to interact with the contractor. And so the inspectors are the ones who would ensure that the contractors are following the, the drawing, the approved plan, and in, and in doing the work in line with, with what is the standard in, within the, the, the country. Right. Suppose I have a piece of land, for example, and I would like NHC to build on my land. Can I bring a, a plan and have NHC build on that land for me? Is that an option? Well, yes, it is an option, but with, with, with some clarity. Now, NHC, in the past, prior to, to the Unity Administration, would have built only on NHC lands and sparingly on private lands. But for this administration, we would have built a number of homes, I think it's over, almost over 100 homes, on private individual lands. Now, some persons are given the opportunity to, to use the NHC plans. Now, there are persons who would say that, I do not want an NHC design house. Now, if NHC is going to use NHC funds, we'll only build an NHC design house for you on that land. If you are in the category of over five, your family is owning, earning over $3,000, then you have that option to go to the bank. Persons can come to NHC, interact with the inspector and the general manager, receives a letter to go to an institution, a bank institution. I think National Bank has a special program where we, a, a program by the name of Pride, where we interact and persons can go to the bank and get the approved 
funding from National Bank. Once you get your approved funding, we can build whatever design you want within uh, limitations, of course. I think the, the, the maximum right now is $350,000. And so you can get your own design on your land if you would have gone to the bank, get the funds, and the bank will turn over the funds to NHC, and NHC can build whatever design you want. But once you are not coming with your funds, and NHC is going to use NHC funds, it has to be an NHC design. Because that way we can assist in controlling the, the, the materials and cons controlling what is required to get you that home. What's the policy in terms of sometimes people can get a home and they already have a home? Or they may put that one on rent and something like that. <laughs> Persons who would have had a home before and now need a second home. NHC is catering for first-time home owners. So you cannot have a home and want NHC to build. The funds is not for that. <laughs> yeah, sure. that um, and going back to one of the earlier questions, an individual may have resources of his own. And we have had one or two persons who will say, oh, well, I will put $50,000 in and they may want some different, um, you know, maybe slightly different design, if you will, uh, different quality windows, different quality whatever it is. And we do accommodate persons who would want to have, you know, a different quality uh, um, in their home. Um, and to the earlier question, if the technical people who are called upon to provide technical advice and supervision to those persons, some of whom, some of the country as you know, may not be, um, there are different categories, different classes, if you will. NHC provides that in the first three months of moving into your home and you identify any challenge from any of the work done, any problems, that NHC will take care of whatever problems within the first three months. So when you move into your home, you ought properly to ensure that everything is the way you would want it. Well, the way it should work. And so if that is so, then you have no difficulty. But there are persons who come to us two years after because the NHC home, they think two years after you can come and say that. I think that they have to understand that now it becomes their responsibility. Because what we did in the first three months, held up in the first three months, and if something happens two years after, you know, it, it's not the, the problem of NAC. But, you know, many people feel it is, but it's not. So and it there's a three-month guarantee. Yeah, three months, yes. You understand? I mean, mm -hmm. we're building homes and giving you a warranty and a guarantee three months. <laughs> three months, yes. That is, that is clear. Okay. Now, the, the new concept is to have prefab houses. What is, what is behind that concept? I've always thought of a prefab house as not being as sturdy as one that is built from, from, from scratch. What is the concept? Easier to build? <laughs> well, I will just comment briefly on it and, and maybe the chairman can speak more to it. We and I have to now speak now from the Ministry of Human Settlement. As the Minister of Human Settlement, we would always want to see diversity, innovation, new tech, new methods, new techniques. And when in 2015 we were presented with a myriad of proposals by many persons who were coming at us to provide homes. We found that most of them were coming but looking to get gov government guarantee. A government must guarantee this and guarantee that. And I was not, as Minister of Housing, going to put my government in a position to be piling up any debt. That's where we came from. Because once you're guaranteeing things, you're talking about debt. A kind of responsibility that you might have to eventually pay for if persons do not deliver. 
but there was one person one one at least one entity that offered an opportunity to build um, some homes and the cost appeared to be less than or in line with what we were doing with our own concrete homes in order and we did not have to provide any guarantee in order to uh, at least see what the product was we offered one uh, uh, entity an opportunity to build three homes two two bedrooms and one three bedroom materials were imported from Florida and I can tell you I don't want to tell you um, and make you feel that you should own one like it but I would I would invite you to see it for yourself yes so we are going to go to a, a video <laughs> okay which we have of you know, a prefab house. I, and so the, the audience will have the benefit it is exciting, actually. of seeing it for themselves. It's exciting. So the prefab house is the new option on the market. It is an option that we have. Uh, I can tell you that one that we looked at appears to be one in Hermitage. That is a three bedroom one. Mm -hmm. And if you look, you can see the quality of the finishing inside. And I, I heard the uh, Miss uh, you know, Rollins earlier say she didn't want to give out the secret. But when you look at it, just, I'm sure you'll see what the secret okay, is. Okay, okay. So that, that is where the house allocation will be. Well, well, not so much. That. Oh, well, you didn't see the secret. I'll leave it there. <laughs> I'll leave it. But, I mean, but, but since we're talking to an audience, I, I think I'll share it. Um, these three houses have been, uh, comes with a few, um, and it, she, she said semi-furnished. Come semi-furnished. And I leave it there until you wait because I'm sure she's going to do a special program on that later on. But there are three items in the house that you will not, you will not see in any other house anywhere that we have built. And they are quality. All right. Okay, we are going to go to the phone lines and see if we have some people who want to call in. The numbers to call, 466-2666. That is 466-2666. 662 8674 662 8674 767 4765 and the international number 1239-645-4500. We welcome your calls. Right. So future plans for NHC. Of course, the corporation is not one that is, it's not static. It is dynamic. Over the 24 years, you've had quite an evolution. Where else would you like to see the corporation go? Uh, thank you for that question. Maybe in the next five years, the next 10 years. Th thank you for that question. It was only mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, I had a discussion with uh, the chairman of our cabinet and indicating to him that corporations of the government 
ought properly to put themselves in a position to eventually be contributing to the government's resources. As a result of that, I am proposing to chart a course in the next five years that at some point, if not certainly within the five years that beyond that, that the work of NHC will be such that the revenue, that the profitability of the corporation could eventually help to finance projects within the government. In other words, rather than for us to be demanding money from government all of the time to build housing, we must then be in a position to say, fine, our revenue base is such, our profitability is such that we can now give the government $2 million, $3 million a year. That is the future I'm looking forward to. It may not happen within these five years because it's going to take some time. But that is what I'm asking the board to think about and how to approach it so that we get to that point. Now, one day I would like to wake up, because I'm going to live long, eh? One day I would like to wake up and hear that the National Housing Corporation, the Solid Waste, Solid Waste Management Corporation, the Frigate Bay Development Corporation, the all of those corporations can say, I we have turned a check of four or five million dollars over to the government for 2020, whatever it is. I look forward to that day. And that is what I'm asking this board to do. Begin to think that way and produce the work that can get us to that point. Mr. Lindsay, you have any ideas into a futuristic for the corporation? Well, we would have recognized that the there are more applications for housing than what we can offer. And so you would have also recognized, we would have also recognized that in the past we would have built most of our houses from loans. I think presently we have $185 million loan from Social Security and we would like going forward that we do not have to engage any further loans and so in talking about futuristic we recognize and, 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 and in a very short order we recognize that the housing and social services levy which is 3% that is levied to every working, every working citizen is paid 3% of their wages to, to, to that fund. And so we believe that we, in short order, we would make representation to, for a portion of that fund to actually go to social, sorry, goes to NHC, where we can have a, a period where we do not have any loan payments. Right. Okay. And so once we were able to get that grant funding, I can term it now as a grant funding, we'll have that break where we will not have to pay loans. And so over time, we then will be in that position that the, the minister would have outlined. Right. Because okay. once we pay back our loans, we will have funding that we would have had probably three to four, five years that we did not have to, to pay any loans. Okay, we have someone on the line. Working for you, good afternoon. Um, it's nice to sit down and listen and understand the fact that there are quite a number of persons who have applied for the home. But what to say that you have been on interviews for same housing more than once, twice on different years, but still have not got any word back? That's your question? Yeah, because, I mean, when you go for the interview, they're telling you that you're qualified. And then... Two tools down, houses are being given out and you have not received an answer back. Okay. Thank you for your question. Once persons apply to NHC for home, you have a number of persons making application, but they do not have any land. And so once you make an application, the board would have record would have, would have instruct the corporation to call in persons and have that interview. So you will have a first interview within at least 14 days once you would have applied. Now, we, we would also recognize that in some areas, NHC may just have about five to 10 lots of land. And so once we would have built on those lands, 
we would now would have at least 20 to 40, maybe some cases, 50 persons in line for the, those 10 lots of lands or for those 10 new homes. And so you would always have that feeling that you are being stepped over or you have been um, looked over simply be, or ignored simply because you, in your mind, you are just thinking of yourself, I made an application and I am waiting. And so that is why it may appear that way. And it is because we cannot keep up with the number of persons that need homes. And so some persons who would have received homes will say, I am applying since 10 years and, and thank you, thank you, thank you. And so I, I, I do appreciate sometimes we, the, the wait is long, but one of the things I think the Prime Minister often says, that once you see someone get a key, you know for sure that person is out of the line. And so you now would be a little closer to the line, or a little closer to the top. And so once someone receives a key, it means then your turn is coming in short order. I think that one of the concerns, and I'm going to mention that people would have in terms of getting a house, is that sometimes people tend to politicize who gets houses and who does not. What do you say to that, Mr. Hamilton? Uh, one of the things we, we try to do is build in every area. Um, that uh, gives an opportunity for persons who live in specific areas, specific towns, not necessarily by constituency, but in certain areas, to benefit from the fact that we are built in that area. You will find that we are, in large measure, we have that kind of mentality. We don't want to, for example, <laughs> you tell somebody from Kayon, you're going to put them down in Old Road. They'll tell you, no, I want to be in Kayon. And so that is why we, we focus on areas um, and, and make sure that it is spread around. In fact, in the last five years, uh, when we got the Social Security funding to do the houses, we made the decision to build in every community um, that we could. And some was done, for example, in Kayon, in Connery, in Keys, in St. Peter's. Then you had up the village in Camps, in Boyd's, and, and so on through the country. And so you would not necessarily find that someone in camps would, ne would necessarily get a home over in, in Kayon, if, and especially because they want to be near, maybe family or in a certain a a locale. So you tend to look towards the person who is in camps first as an opportunity, who's there requesting before you begin to to look at, you know, to get uh, applications from elsewhere, look at applications from elsewhere. But then again, there's a, a procedure for scoring these people to give you, to see what score you get as a person eligible for, uh, for, for a house. Mind you, I must tell you, it does not always apply because one of our responsibilities is to build for the indigent and the, and, the, and, the, and the poor. And the indigent and the poor will never score properly on a score sheet for getting a house. And you have to make those decisions, you know, where someone gets a home, not because they are better than the score, and they have a better score than someone else, but because of their position and their need. Right now we have persons, for example, in St. Peter's, in, in, the, in, in, in one of the two bedrooms, home at Parry. I mean, in desperate need. And so we had to put that person there. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Hamilton, we have a call, but, but you're saying that politics is not a criterion for the decision for someone to get a home. It is not. It is the need. I'm going to say it is not a criterion, it's based on need. It's based on need. And I will not sit here and say that politics may not come into it, but it's not a criterion. Okay. Working for you, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes. Um... Good afternoon. I'm calling to say thank you to Mr. Hamilton. And also I have a complaint. Can I get to him? Go right ahead. Good afternoon. 
I have I have to say a big thank you to Mr. Hamilton and his working staff for what they have done for me. And I'm also making a complaint. A couple of months now I hear my daughter complaining about some tiles um in her house, some toys damage in her house. And she been she's making a lot of complaints. Right? And this is this is what I'm asking if anybody can pass around and see about her complaint because I have two grandchildren, one is five years and one is three years and I don't want anything to happen to their feet. So can you please send somebody to look about her complaint? Thank, thank you again. Thank you, caller. Okay, uh, thank you very much. We have another caller. Working for you, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes. Hello? Yes, we're hearing you. Yeah, about when the guy was talking about, like, see, like the social security and the tax and so on, like in terms of getting back some revenue. Yeah, but I find that it's not only with NHC, the other government, the other government places that, like, you know, they are given contracts to do government jobs. And nobody goes and checks to see if the social security is being paid from those people who work on those projects. So that is what I am saying. It's not only happening in NHC. I think that there are some, somebody needs to go out in the, the community when government gives certain projects. It's not only when they go and they see that things are being done, but in terms of the workers and the workers that they... You know, you know that the, the social security is being paid for the workers, so at least social security gets back something from the government projects. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton and Mr. Lindsay. I'll, I'll give you some time to prepare your answer, but before that, we'll go to the jingle. Okay. Working for you. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm. Um, that's uh, working for you. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. You sit your time and say hello. Uh, anyway, Mr. Hamilton, I'm going to direct this one at you. In fact, anybody who has no answer, but you're the minister. I um, think it's, it's a small island. And we want land to do a, a multiplicity of things. Don't you think that we should adapt a system like in the UK, in fact, in European countries? where they have these townhouses, and instead of spreading out, you go up. But the building, the place is still decent and nice. I would have seen them, even in America, where they got so much land. So, you, you have a long house, a long structure, maybe two stories, and, you'll, and, and, and you, you have two bedroom or three bedroom units in them. I mean, and that could say was from the demand for land. Because we were, as I said, we were land for development, otherwise maybe for hotel and whatever else. So I think we need to look at that. Look at Singapore, see how Singapore do with the land, how to provide housing for everybody and so forth. So this is my input for this afternoon. Thank you for your input. Let's go to the jingle. It is important that we pay our mortgage on time at NAC For your future security and a peace of mind It is important that we pay our mortgage on time at NAC It's your responsibility and it's also mine The management and staff at NAC wants to encourage all who holds a key To keep up to date, pay your mortgage on time for your future security It is important that we Pay our mortgage on time at NAC For your future security And a peace of mind It is important that we Pay our mortgage on time at NAC It's your responsibility And it's also mine Visit us at Park Range Bastille Or call us today at 869-466 4701 for your future security. Is in a man.
Okay, welcome back. Mr. Hamilton, to answer some of those oh. questions. I'm sure that the chairman might have something to say on them as well, but one of the points made by one of the callers that you have been called once or twice or thrice for interviews and you know nothing happens there is no what you will call answer back even when you report um, something to do with your home I believe that one of the challenges one of the ways forward under this new normal is and, and, and we've had that discussion that that you know we cannot continue to do things as usual uh, as we will get the same result and so we have been paying attention to how to resp how we respond to those persons who are looking services from NHC I am sure that um, Janelle might tell you that her own I, uh, her, her brains has been at work as to how to uh, how to to provide responses to all of the 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 claims and 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 complaints, which does not some of them do not go to her department; they go to other persons. But there there is work to be done on that, and we certainly will, will do that. I will say though that those who have been interviewed once or twice, I think Mr. Lindsay explained there that you know it is first to get information in their database so that they can work with and secondly to I will put it this way put you put you in a queue so that at least you are in line for whenever there is an opportunity for ownership and I had someone who made a complaint and of course gave a thank you and um, I will say to that person um, I recognize who is speaking and I also know that that home was built before 2015 that seemed to have been one of the challenges we've had with some of the homes before 2015 and so we you know strictly speaking it is beyond the three month window but I will um, I will challenge the the organization to take a keen look at what has happened there and to see whether there's anything that we can do uh, even on the, uh, a different program to provide assistance. I, I, I say it because uh, it was only a week ago that I had a complaint, a similar complaint from those persons who live down in Green Tree. And the Green Tree housing project, it seems, have had some um, challenges with tiles similar to what is being complained of. Those houses were built again before 2015 and and i don't think we ever had a handle on what the real problem is let me say that the persons who may have complained to the technical people at nhc may not necessarily get them to do anything because that is outside of the window however it has come to my attention as the minister and considering that we are team unity and that we intend to have all of the householders feeling comfortable I will challenge the NAC to take a look at what's gone wrong and to see how we can assist in any way on a different program. That's what I will do. You, you see, I'm Minister of Human Settlement. And even if I have to find some way to challenge my colleagues in human set, to support human settlement for that purpose, that I will do. The other okay. thing is nobody goes to check. We have another call on the line and we'll just take that call. Working for you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes. How you guys are doing there? Everyone is okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Hamilton, question for you. Maybe two. Uh, do you still have the idea that government should be still in the process of building homes? And another one, could you please classify indigent for me? Because you just mentioned about a project in Monkey Hill. And uh, as far as I could realize... Classify indigent for me, please. Thank you. I'll listen up here. Okay, thank you for your call. Minister, you can continue. All right, I'll come to that caller. Nobody goes to check to see that the people pay Social Security. And he was talking in the broader context. 
not necessarily from NHC. So I will let Mr. Lindsay respond to the NHC aspect of it. But I will say, um, as Minister of Social Security, I have charged, I have actually put a new mode in place that will be having its first meeting, I think, tomorrow. We've had an orientation on Tuesday. And it became, I, it was made quite clear to all of the attendees at the meeting that we cannot continue to do things the same way or else we will get the same result. The truth be told, even at Social Security, we are aware that out there on the road is more than $100 million to be collected. And so things have to change within the organization to be able to get persons to comply. I use the word comply, but I don't think that some people like the word comply. They might like to use the word that we have to get people who are selling the social security product to those who are there and selling you what social security is doing and you are buying it and you pay as you go because you're buying what this, this, this service, you're buying the pension, you're buying you know, the, the sick benefit, you're buying that. And so we have to put our people, turn our people from compliance people to sales people. And seeing as I used to be a salesman, I'm not going to get directly involved in it, but I'm going to push that line. <laughs> that we go, yes, and you know, and I know how it goes when you okay. go there. You know, uh, you talk about that, but it's one of the persons who can sell insurance have some of the greatest gifts because you're selling something intangible. You can hold it, you can feel it, you can look at it. So if you have the skill to do that, you can sell it. So we will, we will change something at, at NHC from, for the broader community, but of course, I, I leave the, the, this, the NHC one for the chairman to answer. Since it's small, we want land, build, build houses closer to each other or build going up in the air. These are being considered as you know the townhouses is one of the concepts but we have to do more than that. We will have to go higher. It will, it will require new legislation. You see, new legislation for how do you, if, if, the question really is how do you own an apartment that is suspended in the air when you're dealing with property with land and what is on it? So we have to have new legislation. To be able to accommodate that and so we, he's right we can't use up all our land for housing we have to have agriculture we have to have other things you know to be able to for the economy to continue to to motor on if i still have the idea that government should continue to build houses look government will build homes because there's some persons who will never be ever able to build a home for himself and perhaps one can argue that government must build only a certain kind of or quality of homes. In other words, government should get out of the competitive market, not be competing with the private sector. Some people will argue that. And to some extent, they're right. Because the private sector is usually seen as the, the engine of growth. But the private sector uh, and government twinning together, that partnership, I think, will do greater good for the economy. And I will not be the one who will be encouraging NHC at all to be building or, you know, uh, competing and building homes, you know, all and sundry. But we, from the ministry standpoint, have been engaging partners. We have engaged TDC, we have engaged others, and we're engaging more to build middle income, upper income, even some of the, we are doing that. As a matter of fact, TDC has embarked on a project up in Duas, and it is a very exciting project. And we have others who are on stream who are coming with proposals because we know, as a matter of fact, we had put $30 million in development bank for all public sector to, to, to take advantage of. So it's not all about NHC. NHC has its program. And one may argue, I say, well, don't go too far beyond indigent and poor. But, you know, times have changed. And with but time. You know, the things that people get away with with the NAT program, they will not get away with it in the private sector. That is true. I, I, I'll go to the indigent <laughs> first. There's one more point on indigent. Remember the person asked about if I, what is yes. indigent? Well, you know, you have some people who just, uh, let me give an example. I like to use an example. There's a, a chap in St. Peter's who lives under two pieces of galvanized. He works nowhere. He gets nothing. Maybe he has a pig or two, but that's it. So he has no income, solid income, because he has not reached 62 years even for pension, if he's even pensionable. 
and maybe when he reaches 62 one has to say did he have enough contributions to really get a pension i don't know that but he lives in that condition that person who really cannot afford to even chop a stroke for himself is an indigent person we have a house in Kayon. we put a lady who is 80 odd years old and while she has family she really is an independent person living by herself we had a lady up at new road who had a house with a strainer well it was worse than a strainer on the roof we had to rebuild that we had a gentleman in connery who was there if you push the house to hide it fall down a wooden structure so there are persons like that who no bank will ever find it they are not bankable they are they, can, they will never be able to access finance to build a home and that is where government comes in mr lindsay yeah well um in what i would say in 2017 i believe it was february sorry somewhere in april 2017 when we signed the loan from social security the 50 million dollar loan one of the conditions of that loan was that we ensure that each contractor pay the social security and so for every stage we have what you call a drawdown. The inspectors would have to sign off on a drawdown. For every stage, there is a 10% of that monies for that drawdown that will be held back for the Social Security. And so that money is, some contractors actually pay for their staff Social Security. And once they provide evidence to NHC that they would have paid the Social Security, then they can claim that 10%. But if they do not pay, then the corporation will actually pay Social Security for their staff on their behalf. And so that is one way we ensure that Social Security get their due funds. Also, I would have recognized that a number of persons would have had complaints. And the corporation, the board would have looked at creating another new department which will be opened I think it's about the seventh of this month, a complaint repairs and maintenance department. Because we recognize that complaint may come in, goes to the client relations, or somebody may call the technical department, and you find that persons will call and say, you know, I've complained, I've complained, I've filled out the form, then they have not gotten a response. And so we have now created a department that will specifically look at complaints in an effort to reduce the waiting time and to ensure that we can do the assessment and determine early, very early, whether or not this complaint is warrant NHC to, to deal with it or we can advise the, the clients as to the fact that they will need to do it. I, could, I can also say too in relation to where the person was speaking to um, going upstairs, in St. Peter's we also have another model of house where we recognize that the lands in the country are scarce and so persons may someone might have received a, a plot of land 5,000 square feet and normally we will just put a house on it for family but one of the things that we want to introduce is where we can build a house downstairs for probably the brother and have a mortgage and we can put another two bedroom house upstairs for the sister and have a different mortgage. And so whereas the government would have had to find two lots of lands for a brother and a sister, we now can use one lot and NHC can provide two different um, um, uh, mortgages for that. So we have one of those houses in St. Peter's and I think it is, is I think they came in just about 300,000 when you look at the, the, the both um, upstairs and downstairs. So persons outside can look at that model I can be a mother downstairs and her daughter upstairs and so we are also looking at that, that possibility too and the houses in St. Peter's the persons can see a, a sample of that. Right. Now we are really out of time but before we go I want to hear about dinner. <laughs> dinner for two at Boozy's giveaway. John L. Okay, so NHC, we have three townhouses that were me, was mentioned, it was mentioned earlier, in Stapleton residences. And we want to give the development a name, instead of just saying Stapleton residences. 
So we ran a survey on Facebook for the past couple of days, and from approximately 20 entries, we now selected a winner. And the winner will receive dinner for two at Boozy's. The winner, well, the name of the development selected is Coconut Palm Grove at Stapleton Residences. And the winner is Marcus Samuel. So congratulations to Marcus. I meant I really want to thank all three of you. I'm sure there are a lot of more things that we can have a discussion on, but we don't have the time. And I know you will be back at some other point. So, Minister Hamilton, thank you very much and for the work that you're doing. And Mr. Lindsay, as well as Chairman of the NHC Board, and Jonel Rollins, who is Manager of Client Public Relations. Thank you very much. I want to thank all of our listeners and callers to today's program. Thank you very much for being with us today. Next week, we will be back with another edition of Working For You. We will end with a video of NHC. Until then, I am Les Roy Williams. Take care. It is important that we pay our mortgage on time at NAC for your future security and a peace of mind. It is important that we pay our mortgage on time at NAC. It's your responsibility and it's also mine. The management and staff at NAC wants to encourage all who hold the key to keep up to date, pay your mortgage on time. For your future security It is important that we Pay our mortgage on time at NAC For your future security And a peace of mind It is important that we Pay our mortgage on time at NAC It's your responsibility And it's all so mine Visit us at Park Range, Bastia Or call us today at 869-466 4701 for your future security. Easy, man.